All right, in this AP stats test review, we're going to talk about random variables. Now, random variables is a really broad topic, but we're just going to kind of cut to the chase and cover some real quick things in this video. So first up, a random variable is a variable where we don't know the outcome. Any variable where you don't know what the outcome, that's a random variable. How long is it going to take me to take a shower tonight? I don't know. That's a random variable. I have no idea how long it's going to take me to take a shower. If I roll a die, that's a random variable. I have no idea what's going to happen. A one, a two, a three, a four, a five, six, who knows? There are two types of random variable. The first type is a discrete random variable. Discrete random variables, you can list all outcomes. So rolling that die, that's discrete because I can list everything that can happen. One, two, three, four, five, six. A continuous random variable, this is where the outcomes are unlistable. It's almost endless because of the amount of options that the variable could take on. Now, that's like how long that shower could take tonight. I mean, if I talk about minutes and I include like decimals, I mean, the shower could take 5.2 minutes, 5.3 minutes, 5.4 minutes, 10.6 minutes, 10.7 minutes, 10.8 minutes, 9.3 minutes. I mean, it's literally an endless outcome. Now, the good news is continuous seems much more difficult because there's so many outcomes and it's unlistable. But usually if your data falls a normal model, it becomes really easy to use. So please make sure you reference that normal model video to show, you know, to cover that. All right, so let's look at an example here. This is a discrete random variable. So the number of tickets purchased by a customer for a musical performance at a certain concert hall can be considered a random variable. How many tickets are you going to purchase? Well, I don't know. You can purchase one ticket, two tickets, three tickets, four tickets, five tickets. Now, there's no other outcomes, which means that these are the only five options out there. Now, the relative frequency is just a fancy word of saying how often does these options ha happen or the probability, right? So how often does one ticket get purchased? 20% of the time. Two tickets, 45% of the time. Five tickets, 5% 5 of the time. That's the relative frequency, the percentage of time that these different outcomes happen. So what could I possibly ask you with this chart? Well, the first thing I can ask you is to find the mean. Now, that's actually fairly easy to do by hand. To find the mean, we actually write it like this. So how many tickets can I sell? Typically, we use a capital letter for random variables. I'm going to use the capital letter T for how many tickets I could sell. So what is the mean number of tickets that I could sell? So that is the mean, right? Mu and then a T there for tickets. Well, all you do is take the outcome of one times its probability plus the outcome of two times its probability plus the outcome of three times its probability plus the outcome of four times its probability plus the outcome of five times its probability. Now, that's actually fairly easy to do by hand. So 1 times 0.2 plus 2 times 0.45 plus 3 times 0.10 plus 4 times 0.20 plus 5 times 0.05. And we get 2.45 tickets. Now, a lot of people might say, but wait a minute, you can't buy 2.45 tickets. How's that possible? Well, remember, this is the mean. So if we were to repeat this process over and over and over again, so if say that I work for a company and I sell tickets, right? Somebody calls and maybe we sell two tickets. Somebody calls again, maybe we sell one ticket. Somebody calls again, five tickets. Somebody calls again, two tickets. Somebody calls again, one ticket. Somebody calls again, one ticket. Somebody calls again, two tickets. If I were to repeat this over and over and over again, many, many, many times, the the average of all those numbers in the long run would be 2.45. So that tells you that on average, every time that phone rings, we sell an average of 2.45 tickets. Obviously, we're not going to sell 2.45 tickets on any one call. It's an average, right? It's a mean in the long run. All right, how do you find the standard deviation? Because anytime you have a mean, you also have a standard deviation. We might expect 2.45 tickets, but of course, I could Maybe get a little bit more, maybe get a little bit less. So there is a standard deviation here as well, and that would be sigma with the capital T, again, for tickets. Now, trust me, you don't want to do this by hand. So if you're ever asked to find standard deviation, I would go to my calculator. Now, the cool thing about the calculator is it could do both mean and standard deviation with pretty much one click of a button, so you don't have to worry about even doing the mean by hand, to be honest. So first you got to do is you got to enter this into your calculator. So you're going to go stat, edit. List one, you're going to put your options. One, two, three, four, five. Those are the possible outcomes for this random variable. And then next to it in list two, put the appropriate probabilities. They must be decimals and they must match up next to the outcome. So notice next to one is 0 0.2, 0 0.45 next to two, 0 0.1 next to three, 0 0.2 next to four, and 0.05 next to five. Once that's done, it's pretty easy. You're going to hit stat. 
You're going to slide over to one variable stats. You're going to tell the calculator, I want to look at list one. How many tickets can I sell? But you must take into account that the frequency for each number of tickets is different. So in the frequency list, you will need to put list two. Now, this is the only time all year you're ever going to put anything in that frequency list spot. Any other time you're using one variable stats, you want to leave that frequency list blank. But since we're dealing with the random variable here, where our outcomes have different possibilities, different frequencies, right, different probabilities, you must incorporate that list. So now if you do that, hit calculate, boom, right there at the top is the mean 2.45, and there's the standard deviation 1.16, all on your screen right there. So that tells me that, you know, I expect 2.45 tickets to be sold for any customer, but again, it could deviate, could be a little higher, a little bit lower. All right, now what else could I ask you here? You know, what's the shape of this? Well, it's certainly not normal, right? I mean, it's 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 kind of weird shaped, right? Like it's it's at, at the one, it's kind of a 20%, then it increases to 45%, then it dips back down to 10%, then it goes back up to 20%, and then it dips real low to 5%. That's not normal. I don't even know if that's skewed, maybe a little bit bimodal. It's really kind of nothing, really, to be honest. All right, now, we could also ask you to transform. So this is how many tickets we sell, right? And this is the standard deviation. Well, what if each ticket cost $65? How much money? So now I want to transform the number of tickets to how much money? Well, it's really easy. All you got to do is multiply. So you take the 2.45 tickets that you expect to sell, you multiply it by $65, boom, you got your mean and money. You take your 1.6 tickets that you are going to deviate by, times it by $65, and boom, you got your standard deviation. So 2.45 times 65, 1.16 times 65, and boom, there you go. $159.25 is your expected money to make. And then it could deviate by $75.40. How easy is that? Now, notice I was multiplying. If you're multiplying, well, that affects both mean and standard deviation. Be careful. If for some reason the formula involves adding, then it only affects the mean. Let's just say that you spend $65 per ticket, but there is a $3 um transaction fee right now that's a transaction fee regardless of how many tickets you buy it doesn't matter if you buy one two three four five you got to spend a three dollar transaction fee so now that's going to be 2.45 tickets times 65 dollars per ticket plus that three dollar transaction fee but for standard deviation you don't worry about adding a constant so the standard deviation would still be 1.16 times 65 you would not add on the three dollars to that because that's not going to affect how much you deviate and that's something that we learned a while ago all right what about combining random variables so i'm going to um, give myself a little bit of space here all right so let's just say that this is per day right this is how many tickets purchased i'm sorry per customer well, let's just say that we have 10 customers, okay? Now, that would be how many we expect per customer. Well, this is sounding pretty easy, right? 2.45 tickets per customer, I got 10 customers, that would be 24.5 total tickets. Yes, that is exactly right. Easy to do when you're working with means. Standard deviation, not so easy. Because remember, you're not allowed to add standard deviations together. Remember, what I'm doing here by multiplying by 10 is I'm basically doing repeated addition. I'm doing 2.45 tickets for the first customer, 2.45 tickets for the second customer, and dot, 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 all the way to 10. I'm just multiplying by 10 to make that addition faster. So when we're working with standard deviation, we're not allowed to add standard deviations together. So you don't have 1.16 standard deviations for each customer and then just add all that standard deviation together. It doesn't work like that. Remember, you're not allowed to add standard deviation. What you have to add is variance. So I'm going to take 1.16 squared. To get variance, all you have to do is square your standard deviation. So now that I have variance, it's simply by squaring my standard deviation, then I'm going to times that by 10 because I have 10 people. Each person has 1.16 squared variance. I'm going to add up all that variance. Essentially, I'm doing 1.16 squared plus 1.16 squared plus 1.16 squared, right? I got that variance for each person 
times that by 10 for the 10 people, but then I got to square root all of that to get back to a standard deviation. So my standard deviation would be the square root of 1.16 squared times 10 all inside of the parentheses there, and there is my standard deviation. So for 10 people, I expect to sell 24.5 tickets, but it could deviate by 3.67 tickets. So you gotta be very careful when you're working with standard deviation. You're not allowed to combine standard deviations together. You have to think about variance. Combine the variance together and then square root to get back to a standard deviation. All right, that was kind of a lot right there that I covered, but hopefully that all made sense. Now, let's look at an example of a continuous random variable. Okay, so let's just say that I have X, the weight of an apple. And I'm going to choose a color that you can read here. The weight of an apple. And the average apple weighs 9.5 ounces. And it has a standard deviation of 12.9 ounces. That's a pretty big standard deviation, which means that the apples are probably not normal. They're probably skewed to the right, which means that, um, you know, there's very few really, really big apples. Um, a lot of apples are going to be near that mean. Okay, so let's see here. And why, maybe why is an orange? Okay, the average, and again, I'm not saying these numbers are accurate, I'm just making this up, guys. All right, so the average orange weighs 5.4 ounces, and the standard deviation is much smaller for an orange. It's only 1.1 ounces. All right, so, you know, what can I ask you to do here? Well, the cool thing is with continuous, notice I give you the median standard deviation. I have to. When you're working with a discrete random variable like this, I'll give you this chart, but then you have to calculate the mean, you have to calculate the standard deviation by hand or using the calculator, but you have to calculate it. When you're working with a continuous random variable, I have to give you the mean and the standard deviation. Actually makes them a little bit easier. All right, so now let's focus on combining. Let's say, hey, what's the total weight for an apple and an orange? Well, what would be the total average, right? The total for an apple and an orange. Well, that would just be the apple plus the orange. Gosh, I don't think it gets much easier than that. All right, but what about the standard deviation for the total? Hmm, well, come on, I just got done talking about we're not allowed to add standard deviations together, but we are allowed to add variance. So 12.9 squared would be the variance for the apple, plus 1.1 squared would be the variance for the orange. I am allowed to add the variance together, but then I got to square root all of that variance to get back to a standard deviation. So just remember, variance is standard deviation squared, which means the square root of variance is standard deviation. All right, so now let's go and actually calculate these numbers. So the total weight of an apple and an orange would be 9.5 times 5.4. Whoa, why did I say times? Did not mean to say times. So sorry. 9.5 plus 5.4. Okay, so 14.9 ounces for an apple and an orange. And again, the standard deviation, though, I've got to be careful, square root, 12.9 squared plus 1.1 squared. So that's my variance plus my variance, and then all put in a square root. So that'd be 12.95. So 12.95, and my mean was 14.9. Easy, easy, easy. Now, here's something else that's pretty cool that could come up on the test. What's the difference? Okay, what's the difference between an apple and an orange? Well, <laughs> come on, 9.5 minus 5.4 doesn't get much easier to do that. 9.5 minus 5.4, that's a difference of 4.1. So apples should, on average, weigh 4.1 more ounces than an orange. But what about the standard deviation for the difference? Well, hmm, I'm not allowed to combine standard deviations. I'm not allowed to add them. I'm not allowed to subtract them either. I do have to work with variance. But here's the cool thing. You're still going to add up that variance. Even though you're looking at the difference, the fact remains you're still looking at an apple and an orange together. Even though we're looking at the difference in their weights, we're still combining them. We're still looking at an apple and an orange. Even though we're looking at the difference, we're still looking at an apple and an orange. So you have to always add variance. So variance always builds up, it never diminishes. So it would still be 12.95. So that comes up a lot on the AP test as well. All right, let's do one more little thing with this. Let's just say, hey, what's the total weight? Let me grab a different color here. If I were to buy six apples and three oranges, 
Okay, well, what's the total for all of this? Well, I'd have six apples, that'd be six times 9.5, plus three oranges, that'd be three times 5.4. That's easy, right? What about my standard deviation? Okay, let's walk through it. Each apple has a variance of 12.9 squared. And then I have six apples, so I got six variances, right? I got 12.9 squared for each of the six apples, plus 1.1 squared times three. That's three variances, 1.1 squared for each of the three oranges. So I gotta be careful, I'm working with variance here. The variance for each of the six apples, plus the variance for each of the three oranges, and then don't forget a giant square root about all of that to get back to a standard deviation. So 6 times 9.5 plus 3 times 5.4. That's a total weight of 73.2 ounces. And then the standard deviation for 9 fruit, 6 apples, 3 oranges, would be 12.9 squared times the 6 apples at that variance plus 1.1 squared times the three oranges at that variance. And boom, there I go, 31.66. So very, very easy to do um, that 31.66. And this was 73 point, I forget, 73.2. Awesome. All right, that's it for random variables, guys. It's actually pretty easy. Just be very careful with the whole combining. Um, a lot of kids do mess that up, so please make sure you watch and pay attention to that. Also, be careful. I want to go back here for a second. When I was transforming, it's totally okay to multiply standard deviation, right? I wasn't talking about multiple um, people. I was just talking about converting to dollars. If you're converting, you are allowed to work with standard deviation. All I was doing was converting 1.16 tickets to dollars. Multiply by 65, easy. But the moment you're combining, you know, like I said, 10 people together, then you're not allowed to multiply. You have to work with variance before you can get standard deviation. So hopefully everything in this video made sense. Even all the symbols are important to know, but random variables come up a lot on the AP test, especially with multiple choice questions. Hopefully this video will make it a little bit easier for you.